In our last video, we looked at how an adder can be looked at as a whole. And by looking at the whole, we wanted to have the least number of gates, which meant that we wanted to take a different tack and to see, is it possible for us to share different inputs, different gate combinations between our multiple outputs? So we're going to keep on that track, and we're going to take it down to a KMAP method. Okay, so here we have three different uh, K-maps. Let's call this output X for the first one, a Y, and a Z. And what we are producing is, I'm producing an X, a Y, and a Z with A, B, and C coming into our circuit. So the first thing we want to do is, let's just do what we've been doing in the past. We're going to take each individual K-map and figure out how we would solve it. Okay, so let's solve X. So X, we see two good pairs. I have that the first one is A bar B, and then I have the next pair as being A B bar. All right, let's do the next item in Y. I have one pair, which is A bar C, and then I have another pair in purple here, which is B bar C. And then I have one term by itself, which is A, B, C bar. All right, already we're gonna see one item being shared. So I'm gonna do it in the same color. I have this purple item here, which is B and a C. Then I have this um, red term down here, which would be B, C bar. And then I have this dark blue term up here. Oh, that's a, a same, that's a shared one as well. That's the pink. And we see that is A, B bar. Okay, so let's look at everything that we would need to uh, create. So how many gates do I need in this circuit? Okay, each X, Y, and Z needs an OR gate. So I need three OR gates, one for X, one for Y, and then one for Z. And then AND gates I'm gonna need. How many different AND gates do I need? I need one for every color that I have here. So I need this green A bar B. I need the pink A B bar. I need the orange A bar C. I need the purple B bar C. I need the light blue A B C bar. And then I need the red B, C bar. So in total, I need one, two, three, four, five, six AND gates. So a total is I need nine gates total. Okay, so we might ask ourselves, you know, how could we go about reducing this? Now, depending on how much reductions you would need to do would be, you know, how much work you're, you're going to be put into to achieving this result. We already saw that we had good sharing occurring. We had sharing of this purple term. And then we had sharing of this pink term. You know, I shared already two different terms. And that brought down, you know, the total overall. Now, a question is, is it possible that we can, you know, have even more reduction, more sharing? All right, so let's put out these XOR gates again. And when we put these out, let's see about trying to maximize the sharing. Okay, I already know there's two shares that are going to happen. I have the purple share that's going to happen, and then I have this pink share that would happen. 
So I already have those items being shared. So the, the pink term is A and a B bar. And then the purple share item is B bar C. And now what we really want to focus on is, is there even an additional sharing that could happen? Now, when we are going to look for this additional sharing, we're not necessarily looking for the most optimal solution. We are looking to see what can be used across multiple outputs. So in order to start that, I'm going to highlight some uh, items. So let me highlight this single term in Y. Well, if I need that one single term in Y, I look to see, could that term be used someplace else? Yes, it could be used in the Z term. So let me see if I can use that and share it. Now, that's not a reduction in Z, but it's a share that's going to happen. So that term would be A, B, C bar. All right. Then we can look and we can see here in orange, I still need to cover this other Z, but that could also be used as part of X. Okay, so that's an, a share item that could be used. Again, it's not optimal, but it's something that I'm going to share together. That's an A bar, B, C bar. And then I have two ones that are left. These two ones that are left, well, it's something that shows up on both. All right, so what is that going to give me? That's going to give me A bar B C. Okay, so in here, how many AND gates do I need? I need five AND gates. And then when it came to the OR gates, I need a three. So in total, I got down to eight gates. I was able to reduce one. You know, I need an OR gate for each of these X, Y's, and Z's. Okay, so I got one term smaller. Well, that one term smaller could save me, you know, in terms of speed, in terms of resources. I want to be able to show that I have multiple solutions, multiple options, and then I can have a final implementation and I can kind of see what ends up turning out to be best. So sometimes we're going to have these views items as not individual optimizations, but an optimization of the entire uh, whole output. All right, let's do another example. Here we have two, uh, four variable K maps. And again, let's solve it with optimization for each um, item. All right, so let's solve X first. When we solve X, we're going to look to do the largest grouping that we can. We're going to have a term in blue here, <clears throat> in dark blue. That is, we have a group of four, and that would be that I have B, C. Then I'm going to have a group of four in green, and that's going to give me B, D bar. <coughs> then I'm going to have pink group of four. And on that pink group of four, that would give me a D bar. Okay, so I had three terms for X. Let's see about Y. Well, Y, I have a group of four that extends across and wraps around. That gives me B bar D. Then I'm going to have in orange, I can have a group of four for that call, uh, row. Well, that would be C, D. And then last, in purple, I have this entire column. And that column is A, B bar. So right now I have no sharing of any types of terms. And let's look at gates. I have two OR gates, one for X, one for Y. And then how many AND gates am I going to need? I have all different colors. I have six total. That gives me to eight gates 
overall. Okay, that's with us not, that's with us optimizing for each individual output. And now we're gonna optimize for the entire system. Where I'm gonna look to see what can be shared between both pieces. All right, so let's put our K maps back down. All right, so we have our K maps. And now I'm gonna look to see what could be shared. Okay, so for us to look to see what could be shared, <clears throat> we need to look at both items and say, what overlaps? And let's start with items that overlap. Well, one item that overlaps here in red is I have a, a pair in the center. Okay, this pair would be B, C, D. And then I'm gonna to look to see what else is left to overlap. Well, in this dark blue, I have a pair that shows up on both sides. All right, so that pair is A, B bar, D bar. And that's good because what it leaves in both K maps is it leaves large groups of four. So on X, I have a group of four for in green here, and that takes care of everything on the X K map, and that is B, D bar. And then on Y in pink here, I have another group of four, and that would give me my B bar D. So how many gates do I need? So I need two OR gates, one to produce X, one to produce Y, and now I have four AND gates, one uh, red, green, blue, and pink. Well, in total, six gates. So six gates compared down to eight gates, we can see, okay, I'm making an improvement, viewing everything as a system. So that's how we can go about trying to optimize for multiple outputs.